Hello everyone. Are you ready for today's assembly? It's all about nature. Now, my class will tell you how much I love climbing trees. I also like splashing the puddles. But there's nothing better than sitting in a tree in summer reading a book. Now this tree is an oak tree. And did you know that there are about 2,300 species that live in an oak tree just like this? And it could be from animals, it could be plants, it could be birds, it could be snakes. There's lots of different animals that live in an oak tree. Now, I wanted to talk to you about climbing trees. There's some rules about climbing trees. The first rule that you need to know is don't climb a tree if you can't get back down. So you've got to look, first of all, at the tree. Can you climb up? Can you get back down? That's the most important thing. And then the next important thing is you should always have three parts of your body touching the tree at any time. So I'm sitting on a, on a branch. My back is leaning against the trunk. My feet and my knee are touching the tree at the moment. So I've actually got about four parts of my body are looking, are uh, touching the branch at one time. That's really good. Now, let's talk about nature. I've got a story all about butterflies in summer that I wanted to share with you. Are you ready? It's called Butterfly Summer. It was the first day of the summer holidays and Yasmin was helping her mum in the back garden. The sun was shining from a clear blue sky and although it was quite early in the morning, Yasmin was already feeling hot. Oh, can we have a drink? She asked. I'm really thirsty. We've only been working for 15 minutes, laughed mum. Go on then, you go in and get us a cold drink and I'll finish off this bit of weeding. A few minutes later, Yasmin and her mum were sitting on a wooden bench at the bottom of the garden, enjoying a cold drink of fresh orange. It was great to be off school. The family were going on holidays to the coast in another couple of weeks and Yasmin couldn't wait. Just as Yasmin was finishing her drink, a bright, colourful butterfly flew over the fence from next door's garden and landed on a tall purple plant. Look! said Yasmin, pointing towards the delicate creature. It's lovely, what is it? That's a butterfly, replied Yasmin's mum, surprised at the question. Yasmin gave her a withering look. I know it's a butterfly, but the colours are amazing. What type of butterfly is it? Yasmin's mum got up slowly to take a closer look. The butterfly was lovely. It was probably only about five or six centimetres in width but its wings were beautifully coloured and patterned. It was very dark, almost black, with a band of deep red crossing each wing. Further along towards the tips of the wings were a series of white markings. Yasmin walked over quietly to join her mum and the two of them stood and watched as the butterfly took off and fluttered across the garden to another plant. I think that was a red admiral, said mum, as they turned to follow the creature. You'll have to look it up at the library to be sure. Now, when I was a little girl, there used to be a lot more butterflies than there are today in the gardens. Yasmin looked puzzled. I don't understand. Why were there more butterflies when you were a little girl? Well, said mum, people didn't use chemical sprays much in those days. And there wasn't much traffic on the roads polluting the atmosphere. The Red Admiral took off again and disappeared into the next garden. Did you notice how the pattern was exactly the same on each wing, said Yasmin's mum. That's called symmetrical. I know all about symmetry, said Yasmin. We learned about it at school. Well, there's still a good number of butterflies around, said mum, but we need to look after them. They're more attracted to certain plants, such as that purple buddleia or the little hebe in the corner. Yasmin mum po pointed to the small round shrub and to Yasmin's delight, there was another butterfly hovering near the flowers. This time it was yellowish white colour with a hint of green. Yasmin didn't think it was quite as attractive as the Red Admiral, but she was interested nevertheless. I know that one, said Yasmin's mum. 
It's called a brimstone butterfly. Its caterpillars are bright green in colour. I wonder why they're all called butterflies, said Yasmin. What have they got to do with butter? Well, some people say it's because a lot of them are yellowish in colour, said Yasmin's mum. But there are so many lovely colours, I'm sure. How long do butterflies live for? asked As Yasmin, moving closer. Well, it depends what type of butterfly they are, answered mum. Butterflies can live for about a year. Of course, butterflies like hot, sunny days. They're very sensible creatures. They hibernate in winter. I'm going to find out more about them, said Yasmin. I'm going to go to the library and get a book out about butterflies. I'll start my own, very own note and sketchbook. I'm going to keep a watch and see how many different types visit our garden and I'll try and draw a picture of each one. What a good idea, said Mum. And we can find out about other plants that attract butterflies. We can make our own butterfly garden. And when we go on holiday to the seaside, I'll see if there are any different types of butterfly, said Yasmin. That's a good idea, said Mum. I think we'll have a butterfly summer, should we? Butterfly summer, repeated Yasmin. That's what I'll put on the front of my note and sketchbook. Butterfly summer. That's a lovely story all about Yasmin and her mum finding butterflies, just two in their garden. I wonder, should you go outside and see what butterflies you can see? Maybe other creatures, other animals that you can find? You could even make your own notebook and sketchbook or even a poster about the different animals you find in your area. What else could you do to look after these animals? Well, simple thing that you can do, outside you could put a shallow bowl of water and that can give the birds some water to drink in hot summer days and also hedgehogs. Hedgehogs like to have a drink of water too. What else could you do? You could... Oh, for the bees and the butterflies, you could put a shallow bowl of sugar water with marbles in. And that way the bees and the butterflies can land on the marbles and drink the sugar water and that can help them too. Anyway, I would love to see what you're going to do, what you're going to make. Maybe a poster, maybe a booklet. Come and find me and show me. All right then. See you later. Bye bye everyone.